Hey, Susef here. And today, I want to talk to you about Envision. Envision is the newest kit on the block of Chaos's architectural visualization and workflow tools they offer. And it is finally released for everyone to use. And lots of people are wondering what it does and how they can implement that into their visualization workflow. So I'm glad that Chaos is able to sponsor this video to tell you all about it. Envision is clearly a visualization, ArcViz, or rendering tool. But amongst the many flavors of visualization tools that Chaos offers, we need to understand how Envision is distinguished from the rest. If you're an avid Enscape user like myself, this is quite easy to understand. Enscape is a great visualization tool that works alongside your modeling tool as a plugin to allow you to easily see your designs and iterate. However, it does have some limitations in some aspects, not being able to collect multiple models across the platforms into one place, or animating elements of the model for showing movements of people and cars and building assemblies. Or lastly, putting together a very complex scene with great amount of details and realism. And frankly, Envision is literally made to solve all of these problems that I just have described. So why don't we go over and touch on all of these aspects of Envision. When you first install and launch Envision, you'll be greeted with this home screen. Bring your 3D models to life through interactive, cinematic, and emotionally compelling visual stories. So here, Chaos titles it as a visualization tool for storytelling. You can further read the reasons for this on your own and also check out the get started section for some of chaos provided resources. There's a few example scenes for you to try on the sample scenes and then you see Revit onboarding, SketchUp onboarding, and Vintage onboarding examples. You can also download them via using the link that I will leave in the description and this is where I'm going to download my model from. So go ahead and download the sample scene 01. Once that has been downloaded you can go ahead and extract it. And once that has been extracted, there will be some scenes here. Let's click on the new scene from the dashboard. When you first start, you will have some helpful tooltips. Do have a read through and I suggest not dismissing them forever for now, as you might want to have them show later. Now that we are officially in Envision, have you noticed the fact that you did not have to launch a modeling tool such as Revit or SketchUp or Rhino? This is because Envision is a standalone tool. I think that concept is quite important to understand. Furthermore, this means that Envision file is not bounded by the limitations of the host modeling tool. Therefore, you can import multiple formats of files from different platforms into a single Envision file. OBJ, DAE, and FBX files are all supported natively. And notice that the V-Ray scene or VR scene is accepted here as well. Let's import the files that we just downloaded. You can import all three files, building, context, and train. You can import all three files, building, context, and train model, just like how you would assemble a scene from multiple sources. If you have other additional models from other modeling platforms where Enscape or V-Ray works, then you can export the V-Ray scene from them as well. Additionally, you can use a free plugin to export the V-Ray scene out of SketchUp, Rhino, and Revit. Then import into Envision. The imported elements will be shown on the objects panel and you can move and manipulate them as you'd like. And if you want the asset to have a different material than how it was initially made, then you can pick the quality materials from the Cosmos library to breathe a new look to the boring silver color of the cyber truck. Just drag and drop. This was actually an Enscape asset. So know that all Enscape and V-Ray assets and materials that you apply to the model will be carried into here. If you wish to take the material quality even further, then you can click on the select material tool. And there is a useful tool tip again. And then you can adjust these values as well as adding enhancements. On the top left panel, you'll see the three different sets of information cameras, variation, and environment. You can click on the cameras. 
Clicking through these things that are labeled as render view will take you to different views. These views are the views from the objects or the scenes that you imported into this model. Often these views can be locked and you can't actually move around because the camera has been locked. So either you can unlock the camera and look around or you can go here and there will be lock button here and you can unlock it to be able to move around. Use mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Hold the right mouse button to look around as I have just done there. And whilst holding it, you can use WASD keys to navigate around. This button or F11 will allow the full screen mode to see things much larger screen. And you can also see the keys used for navigation all here under the question mark. Notice how the keys are quite similar to what we have used on Enscape. And to not change any of the views that are already set up, I can change it to perspective view. And behind the cameras, there's variations section. And then I can click on this to add more variations. And then on one, and I'm gonna select all of these buildings that are inside of this context. And then actually move all of them up like so so that it is dropping from the sky and then also right click it so that they are hidden as well. And I'm gonna save that as a variation one. So between the two, I can go here and then here. It does look like it is sort of appearing, not necessarily dropping. So we need to add a transition in between. In order to do that, we can go to the animation section down here and then we're gonna add the variation, just drag and drop onto here, just like that. And then we're gonna make the transition a little bit longer. And then you can just kind of drag and adjust the transition versus the variation. So between here, when you touch this transition, you can see how the buildings are just dropping like that. We want that to be a little bit longer. So we're gonna shorten this portion and then make the transition longer and then shorten this here so that the transition is overall longer but this is a bit boring. So we're gonna right click on here and change the transition to ease in and out and the ordering to be radial. And as you go around, you can see it is kind of dropping in a random order. It is actually radial and also slightly differently to each other. So from here, you can either hit spacebar or play button you can see that the buildings are dropping, kind of ease and out effect. So there are many animations that you can create out of this combination. Mix the variation with the environmental settings to cycle through different facade materials as the sun sets in the background or show the building elements dropping and assembling themselves. For vehicles and people movement, Envision has dedicated tools to easily implement them into the scene. You can utilize the Anima Crowd feature to add a crowd of people navigating along the path. I'm gonna go back to General and Perspective View and then set up my scene here. You can add the crowd of people, creates a crowd simulation here. And then I'm gonna click here to here and then Done. Target spline, you can always change the target spline or create new one. And right now I don't have any models added here yet. So I can click on this plus button to find all the adequate people to be added. So I'm just gonna drag this one here, drag that one there, this person, that person, maybe this kid. And then also I'm gonna up the actor count a little bit. So say 67. And then I also need to widen this spline. So I'm gonna select the spline. And then here, spline thickness, I'm gonna drag it up to make sure it is wide enough to cover that crosswalk over here. And it looks like I need to move this a little bit. So I'm gonna drag it to fit it here. And then I'm gonna select back the anima crowd here and then generate. Once I hit generate, it's going to come up with this configuration. So if I go back to the animation, notice how I can just kind of drag along and these people are all moving. And notice how there was one person there who's not moving around as I 
play this because that person does not belong to this anima crowd that we have just made. So I'm going to hide her and then also him. So it now has this crowd of people just crossing the crosswalk. Obviously, you don't want these ends visible, so you can edit that if you'd like. Select this end here, and then just drag that out. Also, this one here, drag that out. Done. And that looks more natural. We can zoom in a little more just to be sure. And notice how people are just kind of moving naturally throughout the space. Notice that person is weaving through people, kind of move around so that they don't bump into each other. And this tool automatically applies the variation to each models that are here. So there's a color variation number four, color variation zero. So they don't look identical everywhere. With the same approach, you can also add the traffic simulation into your scene. I'm gonna hide this car and then anima traffic. You take the same approach with this tool. Draw the spline, add the model, and generate. Notice how the cars are moving like that. Obviously, we don't want to see the end of it. So, for example, we want to zoom in a little bit so that we don't see the end of the people as well as the car. And then hit play button. So the car naturally stops there. And then the other cars will also follow and occasionally move up a little bit, just like that. And this is all just scratching the surface. They have other features such as environmental lighting, scatter, rounded edges, and more. The list just kind of goes on. As you collect and assemble multiple models from all over the platforms, it is going to be inevitable that your model is going to be complex and heavy. Not to mention the layers of variations and environments that you're going to be utilizing for all the animations that you set up. But with Envision Engine, it is very well optimized for being able to handle large amount of geometry in real time. From the top right hand corner, you can monitor and adjust FPS along with the render quality. So now you can be confident in loading out your model with ever growing realistic assets from materials from the Cosmos library. And what I just mentioned here is just grazing the surface. Frankly, I'm still learning a lot of these features as I go even making this video as it is really hot off the press with version 1.1.0. We just received the anima crowd and traffic features that I just showcased. So it is quite apparent that Chaos is determined to make this one better by adding more features quickly. So why don't we all discuss what kind of features you would expect out of Envision and what would you like? Leave some comments down below and let me know what your thoughts are. Oh, and do give it a spin with the Envision as Chaos is offering 30-day free trial. I'll leave that link in the description. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. And thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time.